Well, following weeks of allegations that he was abusing the public purse, Senator Patrick Brazo now faces much more serious charges of abuse, assault and sexual assault. Brazo was appointed to the Senate by Prime Minister Harper in 2008. And joining me now from Toronto is the government House Leader Peter Van Loan. Uh, Mr. Van Loan, good to have you on the show as always. Uh, I, I think we should point out right from the outset here that Patrick Brazo has not been convicted of anything. And yet your party, in a sense, has already passed judgment by booting him out of your caucus and moving to suspend his privileges in the Senate. Why? Well, the nature of the uh, allegations and the reported events are quite serious. So, as a result, it was appropriate that he uh, that action be taken and that he be removed from caucus, which is what the prime minister did. And this coming uh, week, uh, when the Senate sits, the uh, government in the Senate will be moving uh, to take advantage of the rules that allow for uh, his access to resources to be suspended uh, once he's been charged with the serious events, as has happened. So it's the charge, not the conviction, that uh, that has moved you to do this. I, I, I want to go back, though, to, to the moment that he was appointed by your government to the Senate. There were red flags all over Patrick Brazo back at the time uh, he was appointed. It was controversial then. Why did the government, or how did the government get it so wrong in making a mistake by appointing him to the Senate? Well, of course, our preference is to appoint elected senators, and the Prime Minister has done that every opportunity he's had now with three senators, uh, Burt Brown, Senator Unger, and uh, most recently Senator Black uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but uh, in the case of uh, uh, Senator Brazo, you should keep in mind that he was, of course, uh, national chief of the Canadian Congress of Aboriginals, uh, a respected position at the time, and uh, obviously had some profile in that role. Yeah, but, but at the same time, he had red flags all over him. Uh, if you go back to that time, there were people saying that he was really unfit to sit in the Senate. Uh, how could all those warnings have been ignored at the time only to end up where you are right now? I mean, this is surely a massive mistake to have appointed him to the Senate in the first place, no? Well, as I said, our preference is, of course, to reform the Senate. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, we've had legislation for some time to do that, and we actually uh, have now uh, taken the step of referring that to the Supreme Court for uh, an answer on whether the process we're following is one that will work. Uh, it made sense to do that since the province of Quebec was already pursuing uh, a court action in the same regard. So we'll get some clarity on that and also on the question of if we were to take the step of abolishing the Senate, how do you go about doing that? Uh, so our real focus is trying to improve that. And what we'd really like to be able to do is have a vetting process where it is the people of Canada who do the vetting in elections, as has been done in Alberta in a number of cases. And that way, uh, we can have a, a really modern uh, Senate, one that functions democratically, the way that I think most Canadians want to see it function. Okay, well, uh, let's deal, though, with Senate reform. Uh, uh, you control the business of the House as the House leader. Uh, you have not called debate on Senate reform in almost a year. February of 2012 was the last time that Senate reform was debated in the House of Commons. With your majority in both houses, you could push this right through if you wanted to. Why haven't you done that? Well, the nature of uh, Senate reform, a change to one of our democratic institutions, makes it a spot where we're not terribly comfortable using time allocation or something like that uh, to shove it through. We think it should be allowed uh, the proper debate. But we also saw on the number of times we called it early on uh, that the opposition was determined, both the, the New Democrats and the Liberals, to filibuster this bill to the full extent possible. Uh, so we but could spend uh, it, literally but months... Mr. Van Loan, you, ha you, you haven't called it to the floor in a year. That's because it became apparent we could spend literally months of House time and not get anywhere. And at the same time, we had this court action underway. So we've taken the step now of referring our proposed legislation to the court. That'll clear the air on a lot of the objections that were there. Uh, we are optimistic that they will uh, be supportive of the proposed approach to reforming the Senate and making it more democratic. Uh, we're looking forward to those answers. Uh, but let's, let's not uh, make any bones about it. The NDP and the Liberals were prepared to use all the House time possible and every uh, procedural device possible to keep that debate going forever. And from our side, it's, it's, you know, when you're trying to democratize the Senate, change those major institutions, it's not the kind of uh, step you want to take by imposing time allocation, by uh, moving it through in the same fashion as you might with some other uh, normal legislative business. Okay, Government House Leader Peter Van Loan, a, a discussion that is no doubt going to continue, but I certainly appreciate you coming in this morning and talking with us. Thank you. Thank you. 
While the conservatives say they want to reform the Senate, the NDP wants to abolish it entirely. So with his perspective on the state of the Red Chamber, I'm joined now by NDP Democratic reform critic Craig Scott from Toronto. Uh, Mr. Scott, good to have you on the show. Uh, Thanks, Mr. Tom. Van Loan was just here and he said basically that you guys are uh, blocking any discussion of Senate reform <clears throat> in the House. True or false? Uh, completely false. That's a kind of ch uh, changing the channel uh, tactic. He knows that that's not the case. They haven't brought it forward for over a year. Of course, we want to debate it because there are huge uh, implications constitutionally and in terms of uh, other factors, but uh, debating in the House is not delaying. But, but let's be clear about this, Mr. Scott, is that if they did bring reforms to the Senate, you probably wouldn't want them anyway because you want to get rid of it. You don't want to reform it. Well, that's not quite right. Um, we're actually open to a transitional approach to the Senate in the sense that uh, we want to see it abolished, absolutely. And what's been happening with it of late is all the more reason Canadians get the fact that it's a decrepit, archaic chamber uh, with some extremely good people, but most of whom shouldn't be there. And uh, we're open to uh, any kind of reasonable reform if it has uh, provinces on side and if we have a sense that Canadians uh, like the reform. But the reform would be a, a transition to, to abolition, frankly. Well, th this seems to me maybe a change in nuance in the stance of the NDP. Mm -hmm. But if you're now saying that you want reform on the road to abolition, it seems that abolition, in your view, could be a long way off if you get the type of reform that you think is, is going to work. Uh, yeah, take me down that road so. a little bit. Yeah. Go ahead. Not quite. Yeah. The, the fact is that we have a situation where we, uh, the NDP... Uh, as opposition, we want to be able to work with both uh, uh, government in good faith and with the provinces in a, in a federation such as we're in. And if there's some kind of reasonable proposal that's constitutional, we could have found this out six, seven years ago, by the way. This is the same version of the bill that they've had going for four different iterations. The fact they haven't put it forward no, means that they pretty much know that there are constitutionality problems and they have no real intention of it passing. But we would be happy with some kind of a, a bill that uh, has consensus as a way to try to reform the Senate. And when Canadians see that it can't be reformed, they'll understand why we want to abolish it. It will take some time because we have to take seriously the provinces uh, as part of ab ab abolishing it on any amending Let's formula. It's at least seven provinces and 50 percent. It might be unanimity. I don't want to get too far down that road before we deal with the here and now. We've got senators mm -hmm. behaving badly, at least allegations of them behaving badly. What can we do right now other than deal with these uh, cases as they come up? Is there anything institutionally that we can do? And I, I sort of throw out the idea perhaps of vetting Senate appointments in front of parliamentary committees before they end up in the red chamber. What do you think? Well, I think there'd be a little bit of pushback from the Red Chamber because the only real place that could be done is, is probably uh, in the House. Um, I, if I can make a suggestion, there's a big role the media can continue to play here. Um, one of the biggest problems of the Senate, apart from ethical gaffes uh, or worse with Mr. Brazo, is that this is a chamber that is full of party political fundraisers and frankly some of them go back to the old style bagmen. They're there to support their party, especially the Conservative Party of Canada. Mr. Harper has appointed 58 senators, many of them crisscross the country, shoring up the Tory vote for House of Commons elections. They're completely illegitimate as an institution. Taxpayers are funding this kind of activity. Mr. Duffy was one of the ones, is one of the ones most on call to go to fundraisers after the Prime Minister. He's just one right. example of somebody using the Red Chamber illicitly for party political reasons when at the beginning oh. the, the yeah. Senate was supposed to be about regional representation. This is a big discussion and we've got to continue it and the media does have a role in continuing that conversation but I thank you for taking part in it this morning. Uh, Craig Scott from Toronto with the NDP. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Tom.